My favorite network enabled KVM just got a whole lot better. Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Tiny Pilot KVM again. This is actually something that I reviewed on the channel a little while ago. And now that some time has passed and some new features were added, we also have a new version. I figured it was time to take another look at the Tiny Pilot KVM. So in today's video, I'm going to let you know what's changed in the latest iteration of this KVM, why it's so awesome. And I'll give you my final thoughts on this product and let you guys know if this is something that you should buy or build yourself. Now, if you haven't actually heard of the Tiny Pilot before, and if you haven't seen my previous video about the Tiny Pilot, then you might be wondering what the heck it is in the first place. Well, actually, it's one of my favorite Raspberry Pi based projects. And what it allows you to do is view the screen of your server or any other device that can hook up to a VGA or HDMI display. And it gives you control of that device through your web browser. But it doesn't stop there. There's some awesome features that are added on as well. For example, you could use the Tiny Pilot KVM to boot a server via an ISO image. So that way you don't have to worry about writing that image to a USB flash drive. You could just boot directly from the ISO image on any server that can normally boot from a USB device, which is pretty much most of them nowadays. It also features a very easy to use interface and we're going to take a look at it in today's video. Now, even though this device was sent to me by the developer for me to review, that doesn't mean that you're going to get a biased review. I'm going to give you my honest opinion like I always do. And in today's video, we're going to check it out. So how about we go ahead and get started and check out the Tiny Pilot KVM. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is everything that the Tiny Pilot KVM comes with. The version that I have in the studio is the power over ethernet version, which like the name implies, allows you to power it via ethernet, which is great. Anyway, like you can see on the screen right now, the Tiny Pilot that was sent into the studio came with a VGA adapter that actually allows you to adapt VGA to HDMI, which might be required for a lot of older servers out there. A lot of them don't have HDMI ports built in, but that's okay because Tiny Pilot has you covered. The adapter that you see on the screen can be used to actually adapt that to HDMI. It works just fine. And of course you get a power cable, which isn't really needed if you buy the power over ethernet version and you have a power over ethernet switch. And then of course you have the data cable, which is going to be plugged into a USB port on your server that allows you to use the keyboard and mouse from your computer on the actual server. And the whole solution is actually very easy to set up. And during the time that I've tested it in the studio, it actually works very, very well. I already mentioned that it's easy to set up, but in addition to that, the user interface is very easy to use. It looks very professional. And overall, I'm really impressed by this product. So I mentioned earlier that this is one of my favorite Raspberry Pi based projects. So if there's a Raspberry Pi inside of this thing, then does that mean you could build it yourself? Well, absolutely. And not only can you build it yourself, there's actually instructions on the company's website that will tell you how to build your very own Tiny Pilot KVM for under $100. Now, if you'd rather this be built for you, then you could absolutely do that. It starts at about $350 US dollars and some change. And then you add about $49 more if you want the power over ethernet option. But again, you could build it yourself. So it just depends on what's more important to you. Do you want a weekend project or would you rather one be pre-configured and already set up and sent to you? Now, before anybody comments about 350 US dollars being expensive or something like that, keep in mind that if you were to go on eBay and buy one of those Raritan devices, they actually sell for quite a bit of money and those are used, that's not even new. And sometimes the cost of these devices on eBay can be so egregious that you could probably afford to buy several Tiny Pilot KVMs with the same amount of money that it might cost for one used enterprise KVM. And the best part of the Tiny Pilot KVM is those features that would otherwise only be available on those expensive devices are actually present here. For example, the ability to boot from an ISO image, which is especially awesome. So on my end, I had a spare server and what I wanted to do was set up OpenStack on it anyway. So I figured, well, it's probably a good test case for the Tiny Pilot. So what I did was I decided to use that as a test case and well, everything worked out really well. So one of the first things I did was of course, plugged in all the cables. There's the VGA adapter that I talked about earlier that is for those servers that don't have an HDMI port. 
And let's face it, when it comes to home labs, most of our servers probably won't have an HDMI port because a lot of the servers from that time period didn't even have that yet. But we have an adapter that actually makes that possible. And considering that the unit that was sent into the studio is the power over ethernet version, I didn't even need to plug in the power cable that came with the unit. They still give you the power cable just in case for some reason your power over ethernet might not be working or maybe you go a different direction. But either way, the power over ethernet aspect of this is really cool because that's just one less cable to install. And you know what? That might not seem like a big deal, but when it comes to server rooms, believe me, you know what I'm talking about if you've worked on servers. We definitely want as few cables as we could possibly get away with. And one less cable is actually a great thing. So after I plugged it in for the very first time, I just entered Tiny Pilot into the address bar. And then what I did was I decided to install the latest update. So I went to the update section of the user interface as you're seeing on the screen right now. And I just let it go ahead and well, update. Being the geek that I am, I wanted to see what's going on behind the scenes. So it's pretty cool in the interface. You can expand the dialog box that shows up while it's updating. And they don't even try to hide the fact that this device is Raspberry Pi powered. I mean, Raspberry Pi OS sources are even used in the background. You can see Raspbian mentioned, which was the older name for Raspberry Pi OS. You see that right in the output. And like I mentioned earlier, you could build your own if you have a Raspberry Pi in the appropriate parts. There's instructions for that. And even though some really good documentation is on the website for this product, at no point did I feel like I needed to consult a manual because, well, everything was in a very obvious place. So when it comes to setting the password or updating like you just saw me do, that was very straightforward and each option was in a logical place, exactly where I thought it should be just by browsing the menu, and it worked out really well. So my mission for this particular test was to install OpenStack for another video that I'm working on, completely unrelated to this one. But before I can install OpenStack, I had to install a Linux distro. I decided to go with Ubuntu Server 2204. And by the way, my latest book is out, if you guys didn't already know about that. Mastering Ubuntu Server 4th Edition is available right now. I'm very proud of this book, so please check that out if you haven't already. But anyway, I decided to install Ubuntu 2204 on the server that I decided to use as a test. And I thought that would be a great opportunity to try out the ISO booting feature that's present in this device. So what I did was I uploaded the ISO image to the tiny pilot after downloading it. After I did that, I mounted the image and then I set the boot order in the server itself to check the tiny pilot first for an operating system. And then I started the server. And from there, it was pretty straightforward. I just went through the installation process for Ubuntu Server 2204, and I was able to go through the entire installation process using nothing but the Tiny Pilot KVM. So I didn't need to find a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse, and go into the server room and connect those things to do this. I just connected the Tiny Pilot KVM, and once I did that, like I mentioned, I was able to boot from the ISO image, and then I proceeded to install Ubuntu Server and go through the process right in my studio which was great. Anyway, this is going to be one of my simpler reviews because there's not a lot to say. It works great. It's well produced. It's a great product and I love it. This is one of those things that's going to be a permanent part of my home lab. And that's especially useful nowadays because I mean, in 2022, there's still a lot of servers out there that don't have a KVM built in. And for home lab, this is especially useful because a lot of the servers that we use in home lab are actually made before HTML5 enabled KVMs were built in. I mean, I'm not trying to install Java on my computer because Java's a mess and I want nothing to do with that. But thankfully we have this. So those pain points that we normally experience with home lab devices, you know, installing Java for an old fashioned built-in KVM, that's a thing of the past because with this, well, we don't have to worry about it. And I think there's something to be said about a project that just does everything right in my opinion. It's open source and there's instructions on the website like I mentioned a few times now that you can use to build your own. And I feel like the reason why I'm mentioning that a few times is because it's just really exciting. A lot of companies out there might want to keep how something works a secret as an edge in the competition, for example. But it's just so cool when a company just makes something public domain to where you as the user not only know how it works, you know how it works behind the scenes as well. You could download the source code, you could check it out, you could build your own, you could buy one. And I think that's a very noble way to develop a product like this.
So I just wanted to make this quick video to talk about the newer version of the Tiny Pilot KVM. So definitely check it out. I will have some links down below if you want to purchase one. They are affiliate links, but it helps out the channel. So if you're already going to be considering buying one of these, then maybe you might want to consider using that link to help support Learn Linux TV. I would really appreciate that. But I do want to give you guys the disclaimer that my opinion does not depend on those affiliate links, the vendor or anything like that. I am doing this video solely because I really do like this product and I really do recommend it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Click that like button if this video has helped you out. And I have some really awesome videos coming soon. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.